All right, so what we have here is $235 of homesteading stuff. And I say stuff because it's a mismatch of a lot of different things. So I just wanted you to, I wanted you guys to see uh, just what that amount of stuff looked like and what type of stuff you can expect that you have to get regularly on the homestead. Right, so this is about two weeks worth of feed. So two weeks worth of feed and supplies like shavings and how much was it $235? $235. Perfect. So this is what it looks like. <laughs> um, and it also goes to show that a small truck can get the job done. So this mm -hmm. truck um, has been handling things well. So what we have is we have about three packs of shavings. Four. Four packs four. of shavings. We have some feed, you know, a few bags of feed and we have some straw for bedding. Mm -hmm. Um, so that is about what it looks like. There is, uh, what do we got? One, two, three, four, five bags of feed. Yeah, but and there is some still left because uh, the vet did say that our, our animals were getting a little little plumper. Uh, so basically they're, they're on a diet. Uh, <laughs> Whether or not they want to be. <laughs> and this is kind of the consequence too. So earlier in the year, uh, last year, so last year was a year of intense rain almost continuously. And what that really means if you have animals is basically there was no hay. Uh, hay was a real struggle last year. Now saying that we did have enough hay. However, the hay that we had, the quality was zero. Uh, I actually had the vet out because I was concerned with the amount of feed of grain that I was feeding and I was not experiencing any bloat, which by rights the animal should have been bloating and dying left and right, uh, which sounds kind of cruel, but just goes to show they weren't super fat. They didn't have issues with the amount of grain that they were eating, which they should have. Uh, so I actually had the vet out and made him look at my hay and everything. And basically the hay that we were able to get last year was just fiber. <laughs> was just fiber um so basically it, it there was no nutritional value in it and they weren't getting anything from the hay and that's kind of a consequence that you have to be aware of uh the environment affects everything um you know so sometimes when you go into the store and prices have skyrocketed um for things it's because of that ripple effect of the environment and we need to be aware that the environment really really affects how things grow so you know in in it's not even in your area so here we didn't have the hay um, you know in previous years we had a drought where we brought hay in from Alberta and Quebec now keep in mind we're in Nova Scotia uh, so that adds to the hay I was actually paying 16 17 dollars per square bale uh, so you know this size yep um, uh, four years ago when we had a bad drought because it had to be shipped in from outer provinces and I feed about six square bales a day Yeah, at 16, 17, so and you can see rare. this is this is tiny, right? This like is, yeah, and yeah. this here is straw just Yeah, through. but that but about that size so that size. that's $16 for something that that that's you know That adds up real quick and you go through you know right now We're, we're about five to six a day and that's uh, you know, that's a little bit of waste, but not a lot um you know, so it adds up. So the environment can really uh, affect how much you need to spend on things like feed, right? Um, and whatnot. So we were we were spending so much. I was spending over four hundred dollars uh, biweekly on grain for them on top of their hay because it had no nutritional value. Now uh, this year is a great hay season. It's ample. Um, you know the quality is there, and uh, they got so fat off of hay. Uh, it's wonderful to see. Uh, so we did cut back on this. Now, you might be like, well, if you cut back, why is, why is this? So uh, this, these two lovely bags with the blue tags, these are for our calf, Dandelion. <laughs> so she gets grain every day, twice a day. Um, and all of our does and all of our ewes are bred. So now we're just making sure that they have enough. Uh, so we have another successful season of kidding and lambing. Um, so we're just, you know, supplementing things like that um, and treats and just all that good stuff. Because you can't have just in the line have all that good stuff because goats and sheep can be determined and they will break down fences, which we see sometimes in our videos where they're just walking through fences uh, to get what they want. So, you know, this is kind of a reality. When you try to do this, 
uh, you know, in the past, homesteading used to be a way to survive because you couldn't afford to do it any other way. Mm -hmm. Now, to do things like canning, jam, produce your own food, your own eggs, all of that stuff is now almost just a hobby because the costs of it have become so unrealistic. Right. That you can't do that to survive. Right. To survive, you have to go and buy commercial prices for, you know, the 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 awful stuff that we're importing in, um, you know, from, you know, the U.S. and stuff like that because it's cheaper and you have to watch that. So that's kind of the downside. I mean, we'll always continue to do this and, and provide the best care we can for them. But this is kind of a two weeks. We shop pretty much exclusively at Walker Speed Store in Cole Harbor <laughs> because I absolutely love them to death. So they were, I think this year was 40-ish years in business. It's family owned. It is, you know, uh, the the gentleman who runs it now, it, Craig, um, absolutely fantastic. And he has been so instrumental actually in the success of what we're doing here, even though he isn't aware. Um, because what happens, we're working full time. And so the available time to do things is very low. So we really kind of tag team these things together. So I'm working and I will send Craig a message, uh, be like, this is this is what I need this week. He puts it together on a pallet and I usually do it kind of the first of the week. And we pick up on a Thursday, uh, typically because they're open a little bit later and Dean can make it after work mm -hmm. with the truck to pick it up. And you know, sometimes if it's all feed and it's a lot, they've actually just put the entire pallet with their forklift on here. You don't get that service anywhere else. Right, but let me, okay, let me just reel you back in here a little bit. Because what I wanted to focus on basically was um, uh, what you can expect for an ongoing cost. So as you, we already talked about the numbers, you know, about $230. It'll do you for about two weeks. That includes, of course, the shavings, which are the bedding and yeah. such. So, so. A little bit of supplemental food yeah. and some straw also for bedding. Obviously, that doesn't include hay. Because there's no hay here. Hay. So hay is an entire other bill. It is an entire other bill. Um, I am currently getting it delivered for $7 a bale. Mm -hmm. Good quality hay. And I also have two backup plans in <laughs> case. And a third would be the feed store. Um, so that I don't have to spend $500 bi-weekly on grain. Not in counting hay and not including shavings or bedding and stuff like that. Because we're moving into winter. Uh, shavings are really good for like my goats and everything so that's who gets that the pig gets straw the emus get straw right. um, you know and the cows probably get straw too <laughs> it's just um, you know so those are more expensive so I think those were I don't even know like ten ten dollars eleven dollars straw is kind of pricey um, you know for that and I'll, I'll these will all be used today. And my last question uh, is regarding the grain. So when you do have to supplement your low quality hay mm -hmm. with grain, what are, what, what's, the, what's the cost of grain? Uh, I guess how much is even needed? Like how does a bag of grain compare to a square of hay? Mm. Um, so it's, it's higher in carbohydrates usually. Right. Um, you know, there's, there's more sugars in them. Right. Um, they are formulated for the specific animal. So you can see here, um, this is an, a beef grower here. So you can, they come with all these right. feeding instructions. Um, you know, the big thing too, if you have sheep, a lot of food uh, can't be mixed. So the sheep can't have this cause there's copper. Okay. Um, Sheep can't have goat feet because there's copper. Right, okay. Goats can have this because there's right. copper. Um, and so, you know, it, it's hit or miss. Like, when I was supplementing because I had awful hay, I was going to one of these a day. Okay. That's scary because we don't have the animals to feed that. Yeah. Uh, you know, and this is, you know, depending on what it is, it's about 22-ish dollars. 22, uh, if you get into, like, the goat ration and stuff, it's closer to 26 Right. Um, so, like twenty six dollars a day for that one bag, which is what we were doing. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, I my animals were okay. Yeah. Um, the vet said you know they were perfect. Right, but you risk a lot of health issues with grain. Yeah. Like and you said, bloat in that, bloat, which is why you would never. 
the rumen. You would never just get rid of hay and do grain. Like, that's not enough. Like, it has to, well, yeah. I mean, besides the cost. Obviously, yeah. the cost is astronomical. Yeah. But if that wasn't, grain is not a substitute for hay. No. no, they need that in their diets. Right. Uh, 100%. It could kill them if you don't. Right. So always 24-7 access to hay. Uh, and then this is kind of more the supplement or the top off is always how this how grains should be considered. Um, which is good because it's expensive. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, and I have some different things here. Grab it. Um, <laughs> so this is black oil sunflower seed. So this is one of my favorite additives to all of my feed right. for every animal here on the farm. I would love to get to the point where I just throw this entire bag down and grow it. <laughs> um, this is oily. It is high in phosphates, which is a concern when you have males um, because it can cause them to have a urinary blockage. But basically, this can help with weight gain, shiny coats you know, overall health and energy. Uh, so basically when I'm giving, everyone would have, you know, their portion and, uh, you know, a little bit of, of this in it and they absolutely love it. It's a great treat. Uh, nobody has anything bad really with it. If they have a little bit, don't feed them a bag, obviously. <laughs> but this was $30. Wow. This last year uh, was 40 oh, Okay. Uh, so Walker's actually made a really uh, lucrative deal. They locked in pricing uh, for twenty nine ninety nine from I think it's from like Manitoba or something uh, for this. But last uh, last winter and like last year, I was paying forty dollars a bag. Wow. You know, so forty dollars a bag biweekly on just this. <laughs> you know, so yeah, it, it adds up. It and does. You have to really be aware that you have to be fluid with that pocketbook. Yeah. If you're not. Or you're not willing to don't do it yeah absolutely no that's wonderful and that covered on almost everything and um yeah so uh thanks for joining us guys and that's just a little bit of the cost because you don't know you don't know till you see it you don't know that you might need shavings you might need straw you need a little bit of all of that you need the grain you need the hay yeah. these so, are the things you will need and that's why you will need yeah. it so this is five bags of grain four bags of shavings two bales of straw $235. Awesome. Well, that's it. Thanks for joining, guys, and bye.